Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Shirley, Shirley Lin. I'm based in San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I've, in my past few years, my focus has been very much on the mobile gaming, uh, what we call advertising tech. Um, so I travel around the world doing a lot of international business development for, I've worked for Italian game, China, uh, Italian company, China company, French company, and of course, American companies. So what I want to bring, uh, because of the fact that I travel around and have huge connections, so to speak. Um, so I pretty much have a pr good, uh, and a good hold of the uh, current industry, especially in China, and the fact that, that I know the language very well. So I want to give you, and you guys probably read a lot on the media as to the China uh, game industry. Um, so <coughs> in China game industry, as you all know, mobile gaming, it's, it's been growing crazy and I've witnessed its growth since 2011 and it advanced so much because also the capital in China it's it's so much as you all know it's so much in terms of the investment in terms of the growth that they attain from the worldwide distribution so in China it's been going beyond mobile game because actually mobile gaming has been going through tremendous consolidation in China. As you all know, Tencent, NetEase, Xisanju, and a bunch of the big players. But Chinese people, the players are becoming very sophisticated. And because of the consolidation, it's due to, of course, a natural consolidation, and also because of the um, regulation and policy changes in China. It forced a lot of the medium and small uh, mobile teams to try to find where they can survive and do better. So there's something that's been coming up. It's called pan entertainment. So VR is definitely something that they chase after. You call it a bubble or not, but everybody is going to do that. And VR uh, in terms of the sales, uh, device sales is actually not that great, but everybody wants to watch other people play. Um, so VR is there, you can see the bubble uh, uh, coming down, but um, and Tencent is creating, has been creating its own Steam replacement. In China, it's called Wii Game. It's basically like Steam for China. And they have already worked with some of the content provider to, to get more uh, games on Wii game. Uh, kind of keep it low there, uh, doing there. Uh, because my time is limited, so I'm going to just whip through this really quick. Um, so the Wii game is a very closed door. And as you know, uh, Steam in 2016, 25% of their global revenue came from China. So the market is here, as you all know. Um, so it has to do with the unique uh, lifestyle in China because people spend uh, so much time on metro. You guys have metro, but it's short distance. But over there, you spend a lot of time because of the huge population. And even if you drive or in taxi, because of traffic jam, people just spend a lot of time there, which means they have a lot of time to, what, to use on your mobile phone to either watch soap opera, to read the news, or play games that's fragmented that they can control. So government basically uh, clamped down on a lot of uh, policy changes, basically the content, not allowing violence, not allowing blood, not allowing anything that's not aligned with the policy there. Uh, so also Chinese big players have been going abroad to acquire IPs. So there's opportunities for Western game. And there's a lot of talents in Europe that I have seen, personally seen also. So anything that can have the potential to build a strong IP, that Chinese company will be very interested. But the, the quality needs to be higher because they are very picky, because um, they already have a tremendous a number of gaming domestically. 
Uh, so I mentioned about the, the big one you have to know, BAD. It's uh, uh, Baidu, um, Alibaba, and Tencent. And now I call BAD, adding Huawei to it. So this broader sense of uh, pain entertainment evolves from building from mobile game into IP. So from a popular mobile game, it develops into uh, a soap opera. So you can watch soap opera, uh, you know, characters, uh, historical stories, and then also play the games. Extremely sophisticated on that. So um, these are some of the data, and then I'm willing to share the, the slides later on. In uh, also the e-commerce, as you know, um, and enterprise software entertainment, of course, is huge. That. And these are just some of the data that we um, collected. Um, this, you can show the, the, the investment uh, in terms of billions um, in renminbi. And it's a number that will make you drop your jaws. So as I mentioned, that penetration in the life, in personal life, and I witnessed that. Last year, I went to China several times, and by March, I went in. Um, they basically, people in China, they used one application that penetrate in their life. It's called WeChat. And I advise to many of you, if you want everyone to do any business at all in China, download WeChat. I I don't get a penny, I don't get equity from them, but that's only communication tool that they use worldwide. Um, so they can even pay the street food, you know, baked corns with WeChat payment. They don't have to carry cash at all. Um, so again, their life is so much on the mobile that they can do anything, animation, watching film, watching soap opera, reading books, paying everything, movie, film, online, offline, everything. And also, you, as you know, uh, gambling is banned in China. However, watching other people play gamble is not banned. So it's allowed. So that uh, means that eSport in China is also very huge. So some of the broader market just say, you know, sorry, it's all Chinese. Um, but this is a, the, the part of where their investment, they're focused on. And as you all know, any of the Chinese conglomerate, they don't just focus on games. They invest in many, many sectors. And they be coming to Europe to look for talents, to look for uh, merger acquisition investment as well. So this is user age, and I don't know what you guys um, have here, but you look at the 23%, that's blue, that's uh, 19 and under. So 33%, the largest kind of orange color, um, that's 40 to, uh, 20 to 29. So the age is very young that they spend so much time on it. Um, so live streaming is part of that is uh, helping what? you can also call influential marketing. But people enjoy that, um, doing a lot of live streaming, uh, selling a lot of e-commerce as well. Um, so live influencer marketing through live streaming has become really huge. For example, Cheetah has developed its own live streaming uh, platform. Um, so, so the games um, in China, because of the update of the government policy that um, I think it was the last year, in March, that for every update of your mobile games, uh, PC games also, uh, you need to submit to the government agency for approval. Okay, and you need to pre-install on your device, which means and uh, which can means anywhere between two months to six or eight months to get approval. This is update. And for you guys who have been doing mobile games on, on iOS or Google Play, you know, pretty much one month or two months, you do update and you need to submit for approval. Which means now if you go to, if you are eyeing for China market, you need to be able to work with a partner who have already the license to publish and then you work with them. If you want to start a company, set up a branch office in China, you need to be also aware of all the legal matters of setting up the entity. It's a huge investment. I would advise anybody to think about it deeper before you go there, unless you already see a market out there. Uh, however, just for individual games, work with a partner. Um, 
So live streaming and um, and to Chinese people are very much uh, monetization driven. Okay, making money is very important for them. So even from day one with the live streaming, they they already figure out the business model how to make uh, money. Uh, of course, uh, paid by the game companies, game teams for user acquisition. That's a big money driven uh, sector, and also a lot of the product placement across the game uh, promotion as well. And because of that, by the sheer volume of the audience in China, it prompts a lot of their advancement in AI technology, machine learning. So extremely powerful in China. Mobile gaming. Um, so first time in 2016, it surpassed the PC gaming. So it's almost 60% growth year to year. User growth, it's bigger than that number by now. Um, again, um, as Southeast Asia is also a good market for you guys wanting to penetrate in Asia market uh, because the cost of user acquisition is still low. So you can probably uh, spend some of your marketing budget to get there and show some uh, monetization that you can get your ROI return of your investment. Um, also, uh, Southeast Asia, they adopt uh, other foreign um, culture um, incensed uh, or inspired the games pretty much well. Um, so, like I mentioned, eSport and the tournament online and offline, it's, it's going on in every city, including Tier 1, Tier 2 city in China. Again, through live streaming, you can watch other people play Texas Hold'em. And, uh, and then it's actually probably people are betting on that kind of things as well. Um, so eSport alone last year, it's 700 million. Um, again, the IP, they've been coming uh, to uh, California, to Hollywood to buy all kinds of IP. And in Europe as well, some of the strong IPs, um, many of the publishers in China, they will come after you. So you do have that. I would encourage, um, think about the monetization. You need to be sophisticated in terms of understanding, negotiating with the Chinese publisher or any pub partners. To me, I would always advise that it's like you navigate the landmine. Uh, you need to get all sorts of the information, advices from anybody that you possibly know that know a little bit about China market. Always sourcing multiple um, sources of, of uh, reference check. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Um, so these are just as another data about the market growth and user engagement and the largest uh, source of uh, downloading the game. 70% it's uh, because of preference on the genre. So in China, I think uh, car games, no game bowling, of course. Uh, car games and, and some of the character playing is popular. Um, and I talk about IP already. Uh, cost per user, um, this is a number for you guys, are very important. Uh, for example, in I don't know if you can see, that's, in, that's um, Indonesia and uh, Thailand. It's still a dollar, even five cents, US dollars. But you can see on the tall bar here, um, in Japan, it's $12 per user acquisition. And... Um, and $7 in Canada, New Zealand, blah, blah, blah. And uh, China is already $5. And as a matter of fact, this number has been changing. And what I gather is that it's about 8 or $9 in US. And even in China, it's 8 or $9 per user acquisition. Um, so China market, you have to be aware. iOS, sure, it's there. But for the Android, because Google is banned, so Android market in China is extremely frank fragmented. In the peak of the mobile game, I remember in 2012, 2013, there were at least 750 Android platforms, okay, game platforms we're talking about. Um, it's been consolidated, obviously, but it's still a lot. So working whom you work with, um, that's, that's very crucial. And there is a whole lot of um, tactics to get to that. Um, so these are just the device choice. A lot of people more and more still buying the iPhone, but Android is becoming Samsung. They are coming out with 
with uh, you know seven or eight hundred dollars a phone, uh, but they are cheap phones also as well. Um, even their domestic brand uh, Xiaomi, which probably many of you uh, know, they make their uh, big press announcement. They're coming up with a pad, you know, a notebook, and which is gonna sell like eleven hundred U.S. dollars. It's uh, unbelievable that the high end keep moving high. Uh, revenue from all these games. Um, so on this side, um, let me see, on um, the 2026. So that's the trend of um, the, the uh, mobile game trend. So many of them, um, it, to estimate the growth of it, as you can see. And then even in 2016, it was already over 400 million. Um, I think even like WeChat, it's already has 900 million, billion, 900 million users. Okay, so we talk about that um, as to why they download the games. Um, so uh, my time is coming up. So I just want to uh, quickly say about that. Uh, again, IP, very strong IP. So make sure your game is something that that can be played in the global sense. Um, when you have a, a partner, obviously, you know, partner can give you advice how to do some localization. It may be a reskin, it may be a gameplay, because Chinese player, the gameplay, the habit is very different. Chinese player tend to want to have instant satisfaction, so they will do anything to advance the level, unlike you know, many of the Western players, you enjoy the process of the gameplay. Um, so, um, uh, the, the platform we talk about, um, when you go to China, there are some of the partners that you can work with, but be extremely uh, cautious when you select the platforms or partner, a partner who can, who have the deep relationship with the other partners, I mean, big platforms, that obviously will help, right? If your game is good enough, you get featured, um, and then it goes through, you know, a reiteration to make it better for the local market. Uh, language uh, uh, localization, that's the least you have to worry about. It's easily done, but it's a, the, the, um, the, the gameplay that you need to do. And also there's tremendous fraud uh, happening and copycat happening as well. If your game is so good, it get copied, take it as a compliment. Uh, but when you work with the big partners over there, um, they can sort of uh, help you uh, navigate on that. Um, so I'm just going to do um, a little bit the domestic. It's, again, very uh, sophisticated already. So you need to know that when you want to go to that part market, it's extremely actually very competitive as well. Okay, so the opportunity here, I think it's just a, um, the Chinese com games also want to come overseas because it's very saturated, it's very consolidated. So they want to appeal to the Western players. So there are different opportunities with you all um, in the audience. It's not just all producing your own content and going to China market. You can help them find the users, players, in the Western market as well. So that's tremendous opportunities. And they're just starving a lot of the games, again, because of limitation uh, with their domestic market. So they all want to come here. And they're all looking for quality players around here. Um, in Europe, definitely, uh, there are companies or investment, corporate uh, investment coming to Europe looking for really good games to invest equity or merger. And it's tremendous capital uh, going there. Um, so, like I mentioned, you need to do um, the, the trustworthy partner. But I know many of you are doing PC games or console games around here. Um, it could work in China, but again, you're v it's very competitive, right? Their, their own Wii game platform, it's probably obviously feature their own domestic uh, console games. In terms of the device, console device is still not that big of market. But again, free to play mobile game, that's, a, that's still a big market out there. Um, for your monetization, 
iOS is definitely so. On Android, if you do it right, you can see pretty good result there. Uh, partner relationship is very well. Uh, video ads is rising. So many of you, if you do uh, mobile games, free to play, you very much rely on the advertising for your monetization, right? You can do virtual goods and so on and so forth. But the video ads, video ads is by far in the past 18 months the best performing advertising format. And then I have seen also something called interactive video ads or the playable video ads. That means if you have a game and it's placed right, the user feels like it's part of the game and not feel like it's like a foreign advertising intruding on their experience. So that's very important on that. And I'm just going to do a little bit uh, commercial. I joined a team called Umov. And it's a spin-off of a, uh, a mobile, mobile game company in China, across the border, US and China. Um, and we do video optimization. And that's exactly what we, we pretty much aggregate uh, over 30 major video ads networks, and we put in one place. And so that as a game developer, you don't need to integrate with 20, 30 video ads, you come to one place, we try to make sure the best matching ads in yours. So, so we really focus at this company, UMOP focuses on the monetization, not so much on the user acquisition.